Hello and welcome to a, another review of a device which I think until now has had no reviews net on YouTube or anywhere else on the internet for that matter. And the device is the GW Instec GPM 8310 digital power meter. And a power meter like this is being used basically to measure the voltage over a load, to measure the current flowing to that load and to analyze that load in terms of its power consumption. And then you can also look at this behavior in terms of, for example, the power factors or the harmonics that it's injecting back into the, uh, into the power source. Now, typically these type of devices are used to, uh, to analyze loads that are connected to the, uh, to the power grid. So the 50 hertz or 60 hertz, 110 volt or, or 230 volts. Uh, devices. Um, but it also can be used in other ways. Actually you can also use it for, for direct current and you can also use it for other alternating currents, uh, in this case uh, ranging from, from 0.1 Hz all the way up to 100 um, kilohertz. Um, now in this review I will be talking a little bit about the specification of this device and how it's positioned in the market. I want to talk about it block diagram and, and how it works. Um, then we'll be turning on and we'll talk about its, uh, its main functions and screens and the, um, and the user interface. And I've got a couple of things uh, to share with you about this user interface. I want to spend some attention to the recording and logging functionalities of the device and how you can use that data and analyze it on a computer. Um, and talk a little bit of the, uh, the I.O. options. Uh, and actually there's a rather special proprietary I.O. option in this device that I want to pay attention to. Um, and at the end I'll be summarizing my opinions, my recommendations about this device. And I hope that this video is going to be useful for those people that are thinking about purchasing a power meter or, or want to use it for whatever type of, um, of project. Now let's first take a closer look to the device itself. It comes in a half 19 inch uh, case, the usual type of, of case. Um, it's very sturdy built. It got a hard power button. I like that. The, all the buttons have a good feel to it. It's got a large and bright display. It's actually a gorgeous display. You'll see that when we'll be turning it on. Um, it's fairly deep, but it's very, very light. I think this is probably the lightest device I got in my, my laboratory. And let's look at the back of it. Um, so here we see the various connectors. I got my test lead still connected and of course here we got the connectors here for the voltage and the connectors for the current. Now the typical way that you will be using uh, connecting a power meter like this is shown in the schematics now here on the screen. Um, so normally you will be measuring your voltage across the load, the device that you're measuring um, and then there's the, 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 the power meter on the, uh, the power measurement on the, uh, the, the current measurement on the, on the left side. This way you're doing a very precise measurement of the actual voltage over the device, even if there would be a little bit of voltage loss over the, uh, over the current measurement, huh, which is done by a, by a shunt. Um, so this type of scenario you will probably be used if you use a high type of current device where there might be a bit of loss over the, the, the shunt in the current measurement. However, if you're measuring a very low power device, then actually you might want to connect your voltage source, uh, your voltage measurement on the uh, power source side. Because in that case, uh, you, you might not have like anything of the current that's flowing through the, uh, uh, to the voltage measurement. These are very, very tiny influences and in, in normal cases, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But that's the way you would, you would, would technically optimize the device for the way that you're measuring. Now, what, what else we're seeing on the, on the back of the device? Um, we got a whole lot of, of I.O. options, and actually they're, they're here on, on, on this side here. So as a standard here, we got um, RS-232 serial port. It's actually an emulated COM port on the computer. There's USB, there is LAN, and there's GPIB, and they all come as a, a standard. Now we see another connector over here, which is the tiny connector here and that's something you probably not recognize because this is a proprietary 26 pin IO connector from GW Instec and it's quite an interesting type of connector. It can do a, a number of different things and one of them it actually can have 
live analog outputs of selected for selected measurement uh, values out of the device, plus a range of controls and IOs uh, actually in, in, in both directions. Now, this doesn't come as a standard. It's, it's an optional feature and it has to be installed from the, the factory, I understand. Now, this device in its normal version retails for 1,500 euros. The version with the optional I.O. interface included in it is 1,900 euros retail price. I actually ordered the normal version, but they shipped me the one including that, that special I.O. interface. So we'll be testing a little bit with, with, with the options of that interface as, uh, as well. What I'm also going to use for the measurement today is the little box I got over here. It's not that little. It's, it's called a power meter text fixture, also by GW Instac. And this is basically used to connect devices to the power meter in a convenient way if these are devices connected to the regular power grid. So how it works is that you actually connect the power grid to it, you connect the leads to the power meter, the device will be connected here, and the version I got right here is the European version, so we got a, got a German Schuko connector, um, but there's another international version of this box available, and it got like uh, a connector that, that accommodates like uh, US plugs and UK plugs and a host of other plugs. And finally, there's a switch here on the front to turn your device on and off. And even though it's not written on the device or documented anywhere, if you open this up, you actually see this is a, a circuit breaker, a slow 20 amp circuit breaker, which is very convenient. So in case of any short circuit, it would actually turn off the circuit and prevent any damage to your, your instrument. Um, talking of, of safety features, this device is uh, category two certified. So that means that you can connect it to, uh, to the live grid for measurements up to 600 volts. Um, it also got a range of interesting uh, power features or, or, or safety features. One of them is that if you go way beyond the maximum voltage or power of the device, it will detect that and give you a warning. Also, if you select the measurement range manually to a very, very, uh, very sensitive voltage or, or power range, uh, but you actually voltage or power goes much above that, it will actually uh, turn itself automatically to, to another range to prevent, again, damage to the, uh, to the instrument. That's well done. Let's now take a look at the main specification of the GW Instec power meter. So its, um, it's voltage range um, goes from 15 volts all the way up to 600 volts and, and that is for a crest factor of, of 3. For a crest factor of 6 or 6a uh, it's half of that so it goes to 300 volts. Eh? So if you have a more irregular type of waveform. Also the device will start warning you if there's an input signal that exceeds 850 volts RMS at its uh, input. The um, Current ranges that the devices can be set to range from 5 milliamp full scale all the way up to 20 amp full scale. And again, that's for crest factor 3. For higher crest factors, you have to halve it in 2. And uh, the company uh, claims that it has a resolution of 0.1 micro amperes on its current range. So this is a result of having quite a few current ranges as well as a very high resolution on the AD inputs, which is 16 bits for this device. Um, also for the current as a warning which comes in at 28 amps so if you go considerably over the max current you, you get a warning on the device. Um, the device falls under safety class uh, category 2 that means that it is uh, allowed for measurement performed on the circuits directly connected to the low voltage installation so you can use it directly connected to the, to the power grid at, um, at home. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, the device works on, on alternating current from, from 0.1 Hz all the way up to 100 kHz, but also works if you do uh, DC measurements, although of course a lot of measurements basically are irrelevant if you do DC as we will see in a moment. Then in total it has over 25 different power measurement related parameters that it can show. Um, it got a waveform display, we're going to look at that in a moment. Um, it can analyze harmonics and it can do so all the way up to the 50 order harmonics. Um, as we already saw on the back of the device, it got a number of standard options, USB, LAN, the serial port and GPIB. And there's this optional extra I.O. port. 
Now, if I mention 25 plus different power measurements, you might be wondering, you know, how many things can you measure when it comes to this type of power thing? So I created a little overview here. And these are the different type of measurements that the device can show and you can program on the screens which measurement is actually showing or not. So what do we go, got here? We got, got of course, voltage and, and, and current. That's more or less the stuff you would expect here. There's also a voltage mean, and that's the, the rectified mean voltage calibrated to, to the RMS value. Uh, the others are pretty straightforward type of thing. A number of power management, the active power, the, the apparent power, so what's flowing up and down during a cycle, reactive power, and of course the, the lambda power factor, which is probably one of the most interesting measurements you can do here. There's the phase uh, angle or the phase difference phi that the device can show. Uh, it can measure frequency both over voltage and, and over current, but typically they're going to be the same. It can do peaks, can do power peaks. Um, there's total harmonic distortion uh, measurement, both over the, uh, the voltage and over the power. And there you can set that to two different standards, the IEC standard and the CSA standards. And these are just different definitions in how total harmonic power is to be expressed. So in, in IEC, the harmonic or the, the, the distortion is being expressed as, as all the second to the 50 harmonics, uh, the power of them, as a ratio to only the fundamental. Yeah? Uh, in CSA, it is the harmonic from the second to the 50s altogether, their power, as a ratio to all the harmonics, not only the fundamental. And, and so in CSA, it's always below 100%. At, at IEC, it can be below, but also above 100%. These are just different def definitional matters. Um, the crest factor, um, basically telling you about the, uh, how much the wave factor, uh, how much the waveform differs from, from a pure sine. There's the maximum current ratio, which is actually the crest factor divided over the power factor. So these are the kind of instantaneous type of, of measurement the device can do, I would say. Then there are a number of, of, of integrator specific type of measurement. So these are basically integrations or adding up over time. So we got the total power in watts and a, a, a number of variants there. And we got the measurement of, of, of current added up over time. So ampere hour and a number of variants on that. And then you can also define a number of math operators uh, like additions, uh, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, but also a square over b and a over b square, and then you can all define, you know, between what operators these uh, these mass function must uh, must take place. And so there's a quite wide different range of parameters in which you can express the, the interesting stuff going on in in such a uh, power measurement system. Now, where does the device that I'm looking at fit in the market for power meters. Now, interestingly, not that many companies make uh, this type of power meters, unlike oscilloscopes or power supplies or function generators where you have got how many devices on the market. Actually, for power meters, there's not so much. This is more or less what I could find for at least desktop type of power meters um, and mostly one-phase meters like, uh, like the device I'm looking at today. So, Looking from low to high price, you got you got some devices all the way at the low end. Uh, I'm showing here a peak tech device that can just show very simple uh, power measurement. Then comes GW Instec, and and apparently they recognize this as an interesting niche in the market because they got no less than two different power meters, uh, which are positioned at 800 euros and 1500 euros, and and also feature wise that kind of makes sense. So the the lower model here can do the same type of basic measurement as the one that I'm looking here today. And while it can do something like overall harmonic uh, distortion, it, it cannot do an analysis of all the 50 harmonics, it cannot do waveform uh, analysis or show you the waveform and, and, and those type of things. Then we got the, the device I'm looking at at, at one and a half thousand euros. Now, very close to that price point, there's also an iTech device, the iTech IT9121E. And, and, and that, I would say, is pretty similar in type of market positioning to the, to the GW Instec I'm looking at today. And, and that device has been reviewed uh, with a very fine review on the, on the signal path, episode uh, 185. So I recommend everybody to take a, uh, a look at that one. Then there's a, a device of Roden and Swartz, which, which already had a bit of a higher price, 2,200 euros. 
Uh, and then there's also other stuff which is actually in, in, in other sub markets, I would say. Uh, here you see a key site, um, power meter, um, that's all the way up to 30,000 euros. Um, and that's, I think, is a, 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 a one phase model. And there's also a, a three phase model in that, uh, in that series. I, I think there might even be above 30,000 euros. Um, but else there's, there's not terribly much on the market. So it's, 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 it's an interesting market to, uh, to look at. And I think the GW Instec is, is interestingly positioned into that market of, of power meters. Um, yeah, also to note that this is not to confuse with, with what is also being called power meters on the market, but there are power meters for, for radio frequency and even millimeter uh, and, and, and optical domains. So like the key site that I'm showing here and, and, and the Roden and Swartz, and our X power meter series, these are devices that, that measure signals all the way up to above 100 gigahertz, uh, depending also on the sensor that you're using with it. And you easily pay 5K to 10K for such a device, excluding the sensors, which, which are actually very expensive as well. So, so that's really a different range of devices, but confusingly also called power meters. Now I would quickly like to look a little bit at the, the block diagram of, of the power meters and have an idea of how such a device functions. It is pretty straightforward. It's a voltage meter and, and, and a current meter. So at the side of the voltage meter, we got a device with a very high input uh, impedance, two mega ohms in this case. Um, there's going to be some, some attenuation or, or range settings and eventually um, a 16 bit ADC. So that's a fairly high degree of, uh, of resolution there. Now then there's also the, the power measurement. Power measurement, as you would expect, happens via uh, internal shunt resistor. So there, there, there are two shunt resistors in the device, uh, 500 milliohms and 5 milliohms, and it's switched between automatically. And also there we got a 16-bit ADC. And then the next part that comes after these ADC converts, and that's very essential for this type of devices, is a total optical galvanic isolation of the measurement with the rest of the device because you really want to keep the voltage measurement and the current measurement separated from the rest of the device and then follows processing displaying io um, and also that particular uh, optional die uh, digital analog board uh, io board i've been talking about for external logs i'll go into the details a little bit later on now Suppose that you're not yet happy with the range of 20 amps of, uh, of current measurement, the device offers a couple of options there as, as, as well. So what you could do in that case basically is, first of all, you could use a power transformer at the regular current inputs. Um, and, and, and then you can actually program the device so you know there's a power transform there and make the right transformations, uh, calculations in the device. Um, Otherwise, there's also two external inputs on the back. I, I, I didn't point them out, I think, when I was showing you the back of the device. And these are additional inputs for external uh, current sensors that have uh, the measurement expressed as, as a voltage. For example, a whole effect current sensor. Um, so one that's not disrupting the, uh, the, the power line. That could be interesting, especially for, for very much higher uh, degrees of current and the device can be fully programmed in terms of how the voltage of such a device translate to a, a, a particular current measurement. We are now in the lab and we're going to turn the unit on and perform a number of, uh, of experiments. So let's go and see. Powering it on now and in a mere three seconds or so the device gets gets going. So I think that's that's excellent, a very fast uh, startup time. Um, I wonder whether they actually wrote their, their, their own OS for it and it doesn't run on, on, on some existing type of OS. It typically will be kind of slower. Um, we see a big screen, good use of the, uh, the real estate of the screen. It's, it's very bright, it's, it's a brilliant screen. Actually, the, the, the colors look a bit more green and, and yellow in reality than they might look on your, your screen in this little video here. So let's quickly explore what we get to, uh, to see here. There's no load connected to it, uh, to it yet. We see the main measurement values. At the top of the screen, we see a couple of settings. And down there, we see a couple of menu items. Um, so let's start from, uh, from the top. We see the voltage range and the current range. Um, and the current range right now is shown in, in, in red. Why is that? Um, because now it's set at its highest current range, 20 amps, um, and red indicates that 
um, the actual value is more than a factor of three below um, the range that the device is, uh, is set in. So let's go to, uh, to the current settings. We can walk through the various menu items and I'm actually gonna, goes all the way down to five milliamps, but I'm gonna put it on automatic setting. And I'll do the same thing for the, uh, for the voltage setting. I'll bring that down to automatic. Um, what, what is nice uh, in the user manual that is very detailed. So here, for example, in the user manual, um, it shows exactly when the device is switching to another range in this automatic mode. Um, I think this is an excellent example. I wish many user manuals to be so detailed. And, and I think this is exemplary for, for this particular user manual of the GW Instec. That is, that is very well uh, done. We see a couple of other settings all the way at the top. We see AC plus DC. This is the mode. This is by just pressing this button. We can go to the, the, the mean voltage. We can see direct current. So now on the, on the grid, we have a, a very small amount of direct current, but it's almost neglectable. Um, we can see purely the AC and we can see the AC and the DC. Um, next week, we get to see the, the crest factor. And the crest factor is a, a, a factor that shows you um, the peak amplitude um, in relation to the, uh, to the, the RMS value of a, of a waveform. So it's showing you how extreme the, the, the peaks are. So in a DC signal or, or a block signal, the crest factor um, uh, will, will be just one. Um, in a sine wave, the crest factor will be about 1.35. Um, but in some more irregular wave, the, track, uh, the, the crest factor could be much higher. So why we want to take this into account? Because you want to provide for some headrooms in your measurement setting to make sure that they can also properly uh, accommodate the peaks in there. So we'll be able to go to the setup menu, we'll be able to go to the crest factor, and you can see we can change it from 3 to 6 to 6A. Um, and that also means that your measurement ranges uh, get a little bit lower, but it will properly accommodate with the, with, with the peaks in the signal. Now, I'm not going to do weird things today, I'm just going to leave the crest factor at, uh, at 3 here. We see an update rate of the, um, of the display. It can be set from 0.1 seconds to, to much slower update rates. I'm just going to keep it on 0.25, the, the, the regular setting here. Um, and we see some, some other settings in the right top. Um, I'll be coming back to that. So we see the, the, the main values. We see two values shown in, in, in large and, and a total of eight other values set in, in small. And for each of these values, we basically can select what we would like to see. So we would go to parameter. Let's just take the first one. And here we'll be able to go through all different types of settings that we might be selecting here. Okay, nothing is connected now, so what are the measurement values that we're seeing right now? 230 volts RMS, that's the, the grid voltage here. No power flowing, the, the frequency of the grid is, for, uh, is 50 hertz, uh, and there's a total harmonic distortion of about 3.8% of the sine wave in the, in the grid that we got right here. Um, no current flowing, so the rest of the parameters is, 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 is not really shown here. You can make these parameters show larger with the enlarge screen and then you get to see the first two big ones plus the first two small ones here. So that's the enlarge mode, selected from right here and we get them see in big. I'm returning to the, to the main screen now. So let's go and connect uh, some different type of loads for, uh, for, 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 for information purposes, for testing purposes and, and see how the device reacts to, uh, to that. So today I'm going to uh, use basically uh, four different loads for, 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 for the purpose of demonstration. I'm going to use a simple old flashing light bulb. Uh, for good reasons, you're not allowed to buy them anymore in, in Europe, but I got a few spare ones, so that would be good to, to test today. Um, the one I think I got here is a 60 watts one. I can't even read it on the, the bulb anymore. I'm going to use one of these, these older energy saving lights. I'm going to use one of these modern LED lights. Um, I'm also going to use a, 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 a capacitor as a, um, as a load. Of course, for the capacitor, we won't be taking just any capacitor that we will hook up to the grid. Um, be taking a, um, a X1 capacitor. That's a type of capacitor that will be used in, um, uh, in net filters, in, in devices. I got this one lying around when I was doing the recapping of an older Tektronix oscilloscope. 
Um, and this is uh, the X1 capacitor, the capacitor that you would use across uh, the, the life and the neutral of, of, of the grid. Um, the, the Y category of capacitors are the one used to, uh, uh, from a live connection to, uh, to Earth. It's quite interesting, by the way, to look at, at the logic between these X and Y uh, capacitors. Uh, some are made to, uh, to be, actually be open when they fill, when they break down. Others are, are supposed actually to be a short circuit when they fill. Um, but it goes beyond this, this little video today to, uh, to, talk about, uh, to talk about that now. So these are the different loads I'll be using for my experiment um, today. Um, okay, so let's hook up uh, the first load here, which is a, a simple uh, bulb light. And we see the auto ranging going in and we see actually current flowing to the device, 265 millivolts. We see all the other parameters showing up. Oh, it's indeed a light bulb of 60 watts I see now. Um, also, the apparent power is, is almost identical to the, to, the, to the real power. And this is because it has got an almost perfect power factor. It's, it's just a purely um, impedance uh, type of, uh, of load here. So the power factor, one of the interesting things that you're probably gonna use this instrument for is almost equal to one. Um, we see the grid obviously still at 50 hertz. We see that the current flowing is, is, is perfectly following it, also at uh, 30 hertz. And, and we also see the harmonic uh, distortion being the, the, the same because the waveforms are gonna be very similar for, for voltage and for, uh, for current. Okay, turning that off now, let's move to the, uh, to the bit of older type of energy saving lights that are made of like a, a, a little round tube. So what we get see here, Again, it's doing its auto ranging. We see it's losing, it's using less power. It's, it's about as bright as a light. It, it uses 21 uh, watts, um, but the apparent power is considerably higher. And, and this is because of the much more irregular type of waveform. And we see, of course, a much poorer type of, uh, of power factor, um, 0.6 only in this, uh, in this particular case. Um, and, and actually we, we still see that the distortion on the, 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 the grid is still the same as it was before, but the distortion on the, the current flowing, that is pretty high, 106%. So this is because this, this, this waveform is, is, is rather badly looking, the current uh, waveform, and having a lot of, of, of interference, a lot of uh, harmonic components in, in there. We're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at that later, um, but now just looking at the, the total harmonic distortions in the current, 108%. Um, right now we're using the IEC definition. I talked a little bit of this definition before. We can see here on the top of the screen that uh, harmonics, HRM, is set at I. I could switch here basically via the setup menu and go to the other standard, CSA, uh, which is defined differently as I explained a little bit before. And if we go back here, uh, CSA is always below 100%, as I said, and it's now at, at 74%. Uh, percent and we can also uh, can turn this value off and then oops I go to the wrong part and it's not shown anymore here so these are some of the main things that we see with our, our, our energy saving light bulb I'm going to switch it off again and I'm going to switch on the LED light this is a modern LED light bulb again uses less power about 8 watts Apparent power is slightly higher at, at 9.7 watts. This one got a very nice power factor of over nine, so it's much more better behaving. Um, yeah, and I just turned off the uh, the harmonic distortion, so we're not not seeing that right now. So these are the basic values that we'll be seeing here in the um, in the screen. Now, now we're going to look at some of the more advanced screens of the the the, the device. Um, and again, I'm going to turn on the. Um, um, the bulb light as my, 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 my first load here and I'm going to the graph screen. So what are we getting to, to see here? Here we're getting to see the exact waveforms of the, uh, of the voltage and, and, and the current. Um, and with the light bulbs it looks very nice. Um, we set a 600 volt, so the vertical scale is related to, to, to in this case, the automatically selected values here. Um, we see uh, shown in... Um, in yellow, the, uh, the voltage, we see shown in, um, in, in, in red, we see the, um, the current and then the resulting power, um, which then of course is always positive and the power is, is shown in, in green here. You can show them on and off individually um, as well. Um, 
if I would show go to another load here and, and let's go to the uh, to the light saving bulb, we actually get to see something rather different. This is rather badly behaving. What we see is actually uh, it's only started to draw current, uh, kind of halfway the upway part in the, the, the voltage sine wave, draws a lot of current, then goes down. And, and this also explains the, the, the poor power factor of this, uh, this device, this type of, uh, of behavior. Can change the horizontal scale here in the menu, can change the, the vertical scale. Um, there's a zoom factor as, as well, but the zoom factor will affect all the different waveforms at once. Uh, so if you want to just affect one waveform, then you would rather want to to change one of the, 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 the range settings for voltage and for, for power, um, if you want to do that. Okay, and as a last load, let's look at the LED light as well. Nah, it's not perfect yet, um, but still it looks kind of better, looks close, the, the current is closer following the, uh, the, the voltage over the load, and, and as we saw, the power factor is, is, is about nine, so that's still um, pretty all right. Okay, now let's connect uh, the, the last load. I haven't connected it yet when I was in the, um, in the main screen and that is the, uh, the pure um, capacitor. Um, so what we're expecting here, let's first go back to the, to the main screen and turn on the capacitor. There's a little bit of current flowing through the capacitor. Um, we're only talking about one milliwatts of actual power going. Of course, it's not consuming it. And what would you get to see? a power factor that is, is extremely low, which is neglectable. And this is of course because the current will be totally out of sync with the, uh, with the volts of the device. And we'll get to see that if we go to the graph menu. Yeah, we, we, we get to see here the, that, that the current is really not related uh, directly to the, um, um, to the voltage over the, uh, over the device. Um, this type of waveform displays, I find them very, very useful. Now you might ask yourself, you know, why wouldn't you just use an oscilloscope to, to investigate this type of waveforms? And obviously, an you know, oscilloscope uh, you could use to measure voltage. Uh, with the right equipment, you can use it to, to measure some current as well. And, and a good oscilloscope these days would also have math functions, which allow you to, to do absolute or multiplications and, and, and then calculate something like the resulting power from that, uh, from that device. But the thing is, if you would like to do this with an oscilloscope, basically, you have to make sure that you got the right measurement probe to deal with the, uh, the incoming voltage. So you probably want to have a differential probe that is at least cut two or so to connect to the power grid. And you also want to have a safe um, power probe on your, your, your scope. Um, that is like CAT2 certified or so. Um, these devices are pretty expensive, so it is not that attractive basically to buy all of that just to measure this type of things on an oscilloscope unless you need these probes for other purposes. So I think it's very useful to have this type of functionality in, in a power meter like this. And now we're moving to one of the next main functionalities of the device, which is the analysis of harmonics. Um, and to do that, I'll be first turning on uh, my, my, my energy uh, saving light here, because that is probably the worst device I have here in, in, in terms of, uh, of harmonics. So, so there we go, again the device with a power factor of only 0.6. Now, to go and measure the harmonics, we actually first have to go to the graph menu, don't ask me why, and then we do get the option to go to the harmonics menu. So let's go and do that and investigate these harmonics. And we get to see nothing at all. Now, why is this? This is actually because you might remember that early in the experiment I was playing around with a different definition for harmonics um, and I actually turned the definition off. Um, so it's not measuring anything now. Unfortunately nothing is shown on the screen, there's not even an indication you know which definition is, 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 is selected etc. You just happen to have to know. You have to go to the setup menu. You have to go down here to harmonics. We're going to choose IEC. We're going to return from this menu, return, then we have to move back to the graph screen and we move back to harmonics and there we go. We get to see some harmonics. We get to see one fundamental harmonics, very strong, and three very weak uh, further harmonics, a uh, first, a, uh, a second even harmonic and a third harmonic um, almost close to nothing. 
Why is that? Isn't this a very bad light bulb that I got here? Um, well, mind you, we're looking now at the harmonics of the voltage over the device coming from, from the grid. Uh, and, and that's a pretty clean signal. So we want to look at the harmonics of the current consumed by the, by the device. Now to do that, we'll actually change the device to the current mode. It gets blue, that means that I'm changing the setting, changing the current, and yes, here we get to see all the rather bad looking harmonics of this power saving bulb. And we see a much smaller fundamental and we see a whole range of harmonics going all the way, measuring it to the, to the 50th um, harmonics. Now, um, you can also analyze these harmonics by going to a, uh, to a list view. And that's over here. It's showing all the individual harmonics all the way down to the 50 harmonics. This can be exported as well, as I'll show you later, that type of information and could serve for further analysis of, of harmonics of, uh, of signals. And from this screen, we could go back to the to, to, to the regular harmonic screen, that's what we do by actually going to bar. Well, this is a bit strange because earlier the regular screen for harmonics was called harmonics and now suddenly it's called bar. And um, this is only one of the quite a few inconsistencies that we see in the user interface of, uh, of this device. But anyway, we're going to select bar now and we're back here. Now this, this harmonic analysis, um, which is not available in the, 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 the cheaper device, for example, that uh, the smaller device that the GW Instec is, is offering on the market. I think that's a very powerful and, and interesting function. And I can imagine to have it quite a lot of uh, possibilities, measurement possibilities, also outside of, 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 of the power grid uh, with other types of signals where you want to know about its harmonic content. Um, of course, always within the limitation that, that, that the device goes up to, uh, to 100 kilohertz um, of, of, of AC signals. But I think there are plenty of opportunities in, 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 in lower frequency AC signals, etc., uh, where this device could be very valuable in terms of, of analyzing harmonic content. Well, now we have seen all the main functionalities of the device. Let's take a, a quick look at, at, at the remaining uh, parts like, like settings, etc. Um, so in the general screen, you have the option for, uh, for max hold, which obviously holds all the maximum values being measured by any parameter. We got a hold button where we can hold a particular value and we can actually re-trigger it manually by using the trigger button. Actually, I don't see so much use for having a separate trigger button for that because just pressing and releasing the whole button would do exactly the same thing. And I could think of many other much more useful things that you could have used that particular button here for. But that's the way it's, um, it's organized. Um, there's not so much else here right away from the front uh, panel. Um, we got a key lock button here, um, which basically allows you to lock the keys of the device and also allows you to bring back to local mode when you're running uh, from I.O. mode from a computer. There's something here which is called like long push, but I have no idea what it's for and in what kind of mode you have a long push of button. I haven't come across it at all. And we have a hard copy button, I haven't mentioned it yet, and it will copy something to the USB stick, which can be either a screen print of the device, but it can also be a, a, a measurement set, depending on the, uh, on the settings. Which actually brings me to the, uh, to the settings of the device. We got the setup menu, it's quite extensive setup menu. I think we already covered some of the, 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 the parts here. Um, from the settings menu, we can go to a number of soft menus. Now we are suddenly using here the soft buttons on the, on the right of the screen. We hardly been using them before. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but for example, we got a way that it averages value. Um, you can select here which of the voltage ranges and power ranges actually show up when you go through the selection menu. So there. Are, so you, you can disable certain of these, these menu op options. There are certain ratios that we could be determining here. Here is where we can basically define some of the characteristics of external sensors. For example, the voltage relation, uh, the, vo the relation between current and voltage by a particular external sensor, for example, connected to the device. We can go to a second page. We got save and load when it comes to the use of the, uh, the screen print button. We got the 
IO options, I'll take a look at it later on. We got the hard copying options and finally we got the math function here where we can choose between a number of different math functions. We see them here in the menu to the right. Uh, that we can, can, can have calculations performed on the data and showed on the screen or being exported. So there we have seen some of the major settings of the device, it's rather extensive. We got some further information here in the system menu, but that has to be accessed down here from this menu over here. We see some overall information of the device, of the firmware version and so on. And here we can also go to configuration and that configuration is specifically about I.O. options of the device. So here we get to see, um, for example, which I.O. mode is running on, whether it's going to be LAN uh, or USB or any other mode. And we see some of the, the settings associated with, um, uh, with those I.O. options. Now, I think you have noticed that I'm sometimes struggling a little bit how to, how, how, how to operate the device and to navigate myself through the, the user interface. And, and, and I, I really think I should spend a lot of, uh, a few words on, um, on that now. Uh, because first I was thinking, you know, is it, is it just me losing memory or is there something strange with this device with the way I navigate it? Well, probably a bit of both, but in this case, it's certainly also the, uh, also the device. So in the end, I, I decided just to figure out, you know, how does navigation take place between the screens? And it's actually not that, that easy. Here we get a bit of an overview. So the, the blocks that you see on the screen here, these are like the, the main screens of the device where the action is taking place. Uh, the, the green ones are the, the regular ones and the, 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 the yellow ones are setups and, and settings, etc. system settings. Now, so you got like um, one, two, three, four, five main regular types of screen. The measure screen, that's kind of the home screen. That's what turn on if you turn on the device and that's where you typically go back to. Um, from there on, you can go to, to, the, to the graph screen. We've seen that. However, to go to the, the harmonic screen, you must first go to the graph screen and then only you can go to the harmonic screen. You cannot directly go there from the, the measurement screen. Once you're in the harmonic screen, you can go back to the graph screen. But interestingly then, it's not called graph anymore, but it's called waveform. Okay. If you're into harmonics, you can go to a list of harmonics. All right. From there, you can go back to the regular harmonic screen, but then it's not called harmonics anymore. It's called bar. Um, and if you're in list, then you can also go back to the graph view, but then it's not called graph anymore. Then it's called waveform. So this is all rather confusing. And right here, this is still all happening with buttons at the, uh, at the bottom of the, uh, the screen that you have to toggle through with the arrows and then, then select one of these icons at the bottom of the screen. Now, the, the integrator screen is slightly different because you can go there directly from the measure screen and you can go back. That, that's what I would have preferred for any of the other screens as, as, as well. Now, even much more complexity comes to the, to the setting screens. So like the, the setup screen, we can only go there with the dedicated key. There's no like a menu type of things. But once we are there, then suddenly we use the, 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 the soft button. So at the right hand of the screen, only then we get to see the soft buttons that you actually navigate to one of the, the seven sub menus via the sub buttons. You can even go to, to sub sub menus. You can go, uh, you can go back from, uh, from there. Um, sometimes the escape button, most of the times it brings you away right away to the measurement screen. But as you can see from this, uh, this picture here, there are exceptions as well. And sometimes it just brings you back one level higher in the high key, except to the beginning screen. No idea why these choices are, are made. And then, then again, at the, at, the, at the system screen, you have to go there via the, the, the bottom screen menu. Once you're there, you navigate through this with, 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 with the soft buttons. Uh, sometimes you go back with the escape key all the way to the, to, to the starting point. Sometimes you go back just one level in the hierarchy. Um, really, it's, it's, it's very confusing. It's inconsistent. I would very much have liked to see a consistent user interface. Maybe use these soft buttons on the right in a much more systematic way. I, I, I think they could be used almost at any point where they now made different choices here. Um, make sure buttons always do kind of the same thing as you expect. Does this hamper the use of the device? Not, not really. I mean, you can, you can basically use everything. It's, it's, it's just kind of annoying every time that it, it does something slightly different. You press a few buttons again and you, you get where you want to go. So it's, it's not that bad, but it's, 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 it's just annoying. And looking a little bit more into that user interface, I also try to understand, you know, 
how do you do settings within within certain screens so again here I'm, I'm, I'm showing a table with the various screens on on the left side and then I'm trying to see how do you change the value so if you're in the in, in the home screen the measurement screen um, you either have to change the value by pushing a dedicated key like voltage range or current range then go through the errors and then select enter when you got the value that you want but in other cases like the so-called mode you just do key toggle and it changes the values right away and for other things you cannot change them in the screen but you have to go to the setup screen and make your changes then in a number of screens then it's kind of consistent you use the the set icon uh, and, and and then the value that you're interested in turns blue and you get to do something but then again in other menu you first have to print enter one time then you have to do arrows and then you have to use the soft buttons to to select the value that you want to have for that thing so totally inconsistent um, in a number of screens you can change the parameter that's being displayed whether you want to see power or voltage level or crest factor or whatever it is in the measurement menu you do that by using the parameter icon at the bottom uh, in the graph menu you also use the parameter icon but then in the integrator you use the, the set icon instead and there's no parameter icon that, that there was space for it but they didn't do it um, how do you go back to the home screen the measure screen well in most of the time there's a measure icon Strangely, sometimes it appears all the way to the right of the other items and sometimes it's just to the left of the other item, but most of the time it's there. Except in the setup menu, there's nothing at all. In the system menu, instead it's a soft button instead of the measure icon. And, and, and also in the submenus in, 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 in setup and system, it's, it's a soft button. And then we got this escape key. Like I said, most of the time it brings you back to the measure screen. But then again, there are a number of exceptions. Uh, in the submenu, most of the time it brings you back one stop in a higher key, but then sometimes it does bring you back right away to the to the highest level. So again, inconsistency all over. I the, the buttons are there, the functionality is there. I I, I think a serious framework uh, firmware upgrade here will be will be in place. Um, Brings me also to the point that there have been firmware upgrades for the device, but GW Instag is not mentioning what has changed in new firmware versions. Uh, I would really like them to do that, so you, so you, so you see actually why you're, you're making these type of firmware changes. Now let's also take a quick look at recording and saving information on the device for later analysis by a computer, for example. And that can be done by going to the setup menu. I have to do enter. I can go all the way down here and I can choose a interval. Um, this is actually hours, minutes and seconds. So I could set it at an interval of um, two minutes. And there's a update rate as, uh, as well. Um, so data is going to be refreshed within that, that upgrade rate. So in order to start to uh, record information, you would go here to the measurement storage option. You choose on and then it starts running. It grays out now some of these, uh, these areas, but otherwise you don't get much you don't get much visible feedback that is running. So it's doing its job now. It's, it's recording. We can go back to the, uh, to the main menu. At some point we could go back to the settings menu. I have to press enter once to make that blue all the way to the bottom. Measure storage. I can turn that off. Then I have to go to, and I'm looking around a little bit where that option was. Yes, I seem to recognize this. I go to load save. It's set on save now. I can, and that's going to be the file name that I'm saving on. Uh, I'm going to say OK. And it actually said save OK. I, I might try the button OK once more. No, I think it's OK. So now it will be saved on the, on the USB stick. Now, because unfortunately there is no general clock in the device, also it's all saved on the USB stick on something like the 1st of January 1999 or something like that. that that's kind of inconvenient to find, uh, find files back. Actually, there's, there's more to say about this, but let's, let's now first here remove this. We can take the USB stick and bring it to our computer. And once we 
we, we examine that data, then we get to see the log input will actually is looking a bit like that. So first it starts with some, some general information. It's pretty well done, I think. You see all first the overall instrument settings. Um, then for, for each time interval, it's going to show you 30 different power management uh, measurements. Then for each of the period, it's going to show like all the 50 harmonics uh, for each of them like nine data points and, and five total points and then it repeats that again for the second measurement interval, the third measurement interval. Uh, so I think I had it set to a quarter of a second, so four times a second he's going to send over all that, that data. So we're going to get a very extensive list of data. It, it's neatly organized and coded so you can really find back your way uh, very well in, 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 in the data. With a little bit of Excel you can you can do whatever you, you want there. Um, but one of the issues what I was running into, yeah, again because there's no internal clock, there is no timestamp here. Um, so either you have to kind of reconstruct it with your, your, your update rate or, or, or something else. So I, I, I think that's pretty inconvenient. I mean the device certainly should be capable in terms of, 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 of the processor in there to, to keep time. There's a LAN port so you could you know, automatically keep, uh, keep time from, from a time server. That all shouldn't be that difficult. And then at least you know, we would have USB files with, with, with the right date stamp on it. We would have time stamps within the data. Now, there's one little fix I found that you can do there. You can set the device to go and record data points and then while it is recording data point, you go to the integrator menu and in that integrator menu, you just choose start. And even if you're doing nothing with that integrated data, later if you're going to store the data the same way I, I showed you before, actually one of the fields which is called time, which had no value before, actually is going to be filled then with, with, with the values, actually the time value from that, that integrator. So you're using the integrator not for the integrator function in any sense, if you're not interested in it, but purely to, to create a, a, a timestamp that, that might be useful. Um, now doing this type of analysis and exporting them, what you can, can you do with it? Well, all types of things, but one, one little experiment that I did myself here that I, I had this um, very simple and, and even a bit old classic AC bulb dimmer and I connected it to a, uh, an old light bulb, so a purely reactive uh, light bulb and I was interested how it behaved in terms of, of, of power factor and also current draw um, as, 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 as a function of its setting and, and also the overall power, the brightness of, of, of the light. And actually exporting these, these different values, I mean I turned on the device, I, I, I played with the button on the dimmer a little bit I collected all the data, brought them to, uh, to Excel, um, and then can nicely make graphs and, and run an analysis. And we see right here that, that the power factor is still fairly good. I mean, the bulb itself would have a, a perfect power factor of, uh, of one. Uh, with the dimmer connected at, um, at full brightness, it's still pretty close to, uh, to one, above uh, 0 0.9. But once you start dimming, then the power factor gets dramatically down all the way to, to 0.3%. Uh, yeah, so that's the type of thing you could be doing when you're, uh, when you're exporting the data and later analyzing it. So as I said before, I was probably accidentally send the unit including this special I.O. option. Um, but I was pretty excited about having it and I sort of thought I should figure it out more extensively. And so what we got here is this additional connector on the back of the device which is called a 26 pin digital I.O. interface by the name of option DA4. And actually it's an I.O. interface with, with many different types of possibilities. So at large you have four types of functions. First of all you got four uh, digital to analog outputs that you can use for an external recorder or anything and for which you can select any of 17 measurements uh, coming out of the device. So if we go to the device itself, we go to setup menu, we go to digital analog converter, and right here we go, and then for those four channels, we can choose like voltage, uh, and all these different settings that we can scroll through in this, uh, this menu over, uh, over here. 
So this is basically one option that you have a number of measurement values coming out of the device as analog signals. Um, and actually you can fully program them, what range they are, you can amplify them via kind of mathematical formulas to, uh, to ad adopt to any kind of range setting or value setting that you would expect and get it into an external uh, recorder. So that's one thing. Secondly, there are a number of um, pins on, 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 on the additional K, uh, interface that allow you to control the instrument for example, trigger, start and, and, and stop and that type of functions related to, to the integrator. Then there is a user mode that allows you to drive four different digital outputs. So you can drive like a logic gate or, or LED or, or a relay or something. And then for those people that, that have a need for a bit more connections uh, lines, uh, there's a so-called 4094 mode where you use uh, two external uh, integrated circuits. Um, and they shift data into it and then you can actually have as much as 16 different output lines. Now, the, the, these output uh, options, both the, the four uh, line user mode and, and, and this more extensive mode, uh, can only be programmed via the, the external I.O. interfaces via computer. They're not directly linked to any functionality in the device. But I guess they might be useful for people with more extensive setups that want to control something and just happen to use this device for some controlling of, uh, of external events. Now, um, this all comes on a 26-pin uh, socket on the back. It's a, um, a mini D ribbon socket, MDR socket, and it's also called like a, a, a SCSI socket. Uh, well, obviously, it's not used for SCSI signals here, uh, but there are apparently SCSI uh, cables on the market um, that can do it. Now, how to connect stuff to it, it's, um, first of all, yeah, the, it, 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 it's, it's rather nicely defined all in the manual, as, as many things are very nicely defined in the manual, and we even get to see like the, 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 the relevant circuitry in the, inside the device and the way that you would hook up external devices. These are just a couple of examples uh, taken from the user manual. There's actually many more of them, uh, whether you want to use internal power on the device, whether you want to use your, uh, your own power supply for, for, for whatever you connect to it. Now, so I wanted to try the, um, the real-time output of, of four measurement values. So I decided to build myself a little, a little cable to do that. Um, actually, a, 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 a suitable 26-pay cable is already supplied with the device. So you just need to make your own adapter cable. And the user manual provides you with the specification and the pinout here. So I've been trying and trying and it didn't work properly and after a while of trying to figure out what the error is, it was clear there is a error in the user manual here. Um, actually the, the, the pinout is wrong in the user manual. I mean it's a rather extensive manual with a lot of detailed information but, but this is, 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 is really wrong. Actually I think the pins are a mirror. So it, it took me a while to, to figure it out and to, to solder the right cable. I, I can tell you I wasn't having fun, you know, these are are, are very smallly pitch cables are not that easy to, to solder. But anyway, after that was done, I made my little cable and I hooked it up to a, a, a picoscope. You see a little picture here of the, of the adapter cable going to the picoscope. Um, well, why the picoscope? That is because uh, PicoTech does not only make an oscilloscope application, but also a very nice uh, logging application. Um, and so I'll be using that over here and this is just some tryout. You see some measure values being exported. They don't have any particular meaning in this setting. This is more of a tryout. Now what you also see here is that two of the measured value actually are, 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 are only very small changes. That was because the, the skill the device was set to the output. But then again, each of the, man, each of the output, the four outputs, you can fully configure within the GW InStack um, how we must export it. So you can say uh, 900 volts equals to zero and 950 volts equals to plus five, for example. Or it also can go, I think, from minus five to, to plus five of, of maximum range or so. So in that sense, if, if you know what type of values to expect, uh, the device is fully configurable in terms of how these outputs exactly look like and how you would best send them to into any logging or triggering device or any other type of, of device that will be analyzing your, uh, your output information. And so, so altogether this is a pretty interesting um, I.O. Uh, interface here. Uh, are there things to, left to be desired? 
Yeah, that, that, that was one thing I was thinking what I would really have appreciated is if there would have been a direct analog output of the actual measured voltage and, and, and current in real time. So, so not the, the measurement, the calculated measurements like, like every 0.25 seconds or so, but really the real time values of the, the, the 50 hertz sampled signals or, or at higher frequency. Um, that is something you, for example, you sometimes found in, in, in electronic power loads, for example, that they, they output that on a BNC connector. And, and I think that will be really, really useful because of the very versatile and safe type of input state you have here that you might want to use in conjunction with, with other devices, like an oscilloscope, for example. Um, but well, that's, that's something that uh, GW Instec did not decide to, to provide on this device. Um, but having that said, uh, no complaints otherwise in the in the I/O department and the and the 26-pin interface is is a rather intriguing and and, and interesting thing. So finally, I'm coming to my my assessment of this uh, this power meter. Um, so altogether, I think there are, there are many things to to like about it. Uh, it performs well, huh? totally to to expectations. Um, the device got a very extensive feature set huh, compared to, to, to other devices, also the, the cheaper device they're offering um, themselves. Um, it's very flexible in, 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 in all its settings, huh, which are, are, are well documented in the, in the user manual. I think there's a, a great use of the, the screen, great quality of the screen and, and a quite great use of, uh, of the, the, the real estate on the screen. Um, we got these external inputs for, for current sensors. I haven't been using them right now, but I could foresee scenarios where I want to use a non-intrusive type of measurement of, 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 of current. Uh, there's a lot of I.O. as, as, as a standard. The, 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 the optional 20-pin, 26-pin uh, digital I.O. interface is rather interesting. There is a very detailed user manual. It gives you less of the big picture. If you want to learn more about this, this category of device, how to use them, you're not going to find much. It's more like really detailed information about the, about the implementation uh, within the device. Um, it's, it's, it's quality built. Uh, we got a hard power button. There's a lot to like about this device. Um, where am I more critical about this? Well, you, you already have, have, have seen in this, this review, uh, it's, it's a user interface uh, that is inconsistent. I mean, it's still usable, but, but really. Um, the, the, the text fixture is, is a very useful device, but uh, option, but it's, it, it's fairly expensive, I think. Um, no time and, and, and date setting uh, to have uh, timestamps on USB sticks and, and timestamps within the data it, uh, it, it generates. That, 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 that really could have been added. Um, there, there is no web server, and, and why I'm saying this, well, this is typically one of the devices I have here that I, I might be putting into a rather difficult position somewhere locally where I have to measure something, and then, then a web interface would be even more valuable than on some of the other devices that rarely leave my, uh, my, my lab here. Um, so a web server device showing the full front panel and all the keys, that, that would have been a nice thing. Um, GW Anstec does firmware updates, but it does not provide information what has been fixed or added in firmware updates. I, I, I think that would be desirable. Um, uh, despite the, 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 the valuable user manual and the detailed user manual, I came across some errors and that includes the error in the, uh, in the pinout of the I.O. connector. And finally, and you might not have noticed it on this video, but the device is generating a faint but high-pitched sound when it's turned on. There's something like a high, high frequency tone coming from the device. Um, so sometimes I find myself, I'm working here in the evening in the lab, actually just turning the unit off because, because of that sound coming, um, coming from it. Um, no ID, probably the switch power supply or, 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 or so. Um, that's something that, that could have been fixed. Um, Overall, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very satisfied. I, I, I can really recommend to consider this device, this device if you're in the market for a, uh, for a power meter. Things are well done and I, I do really hope that, that GW Instec is taking up some of these suggestions that I'm having here. I mean, some of the, uh, the, the, the negative point that I mentioned can be fixed in, in, in software, I think. 
Um, and I think they have an incentive to do so. They decided, you know, to, to operate on this, this power meter market. It's not a big market. There are only a few manufacturers. They put quite a lot of energy into, into having two devices here. So having firmware updates and, 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 and fixing some of the, these things that I've been mentioning, I think that will be a, a valuable thing to do. So that brings me to the end of the, uh, of the review. I hope it was useful for you. And, and if you have any comments or, or, or views, uh, or want to add something, please leave your comments down below and see you back for the next review.